because this this building not only this building I've been I've lived in in really and I yeah and I've never known about this building. Everybody does. I mean everybody knows about this building. You know, and it doesn't even know it's here. Yeah. So so this plan. Yeah. Yeah, this is to commemorate when the building was reopened or refurbished mm -hmm. in 1996. The Royal Arsenal Gatehouse was officially reopened in the 19th of June 1996. Yes. And um, you can see where it says um, Victor Farley was the chairman of the Greenwich Enterprise Board who refurbished the building. So we're South East Enterprise and we provide business support for the council uh, for residents of the borough, people who want to start a business can get free business support and also we support local businesses that are training. We used to be really enterprise for until 2006 and then we quickly So South East Enterprise now do the business for really really enterprise people. They do they do and apparently I don't know for sure but I was told that when they came in to repurpose this building originally the only thing that was here was the bird, and you could see right through to the sky through the ceiling. Yes. It, you know, inside the building, it was that bad. That's, oh. how, that's how bad it was. This building was literally, you know... Going down. Yeah, gone. It was, it was pretty much gone. Okay. Yeah, you could see, you know, from downstairs, you could see right up to mm. the sky. Mm. And it was just one of yeah, and it's full of pigeons. And this, the building has got 20 foot high ceilings. It's all been refurbished back to... It looks, it looks so beautiful inside. The last time I was here, that's, that's what inspired me to actually come today and get this door of this building. Yeah, when you came to see Amber. Yes, because mm. from the outside, it doesn't look like... It's a building. And she was actually explaining to me that it's the building next to Iceland. But my mind, I was looking at that building there, all the across. Yeah, well, you know, This road wasn't there. Did yes. you look on the internet? Look yes. At the pictures. Yes, I saw the black and white ones. The black and white ones. People are gathered outside. Did you see the trams? The horse drawn trams? Yes. Outside there? Yes. So I think that's the picture that I'll take. Yeah. So this road here wasn't there, right? Yes. But, but it would have gone in the front. And then on either side of this would have been a wall. And, and all of this here, what's the red flag? Everything over there would have been the factory where they made all the. Let's just go outside and see how outside looks so we know they have. I mean actually this side of the building, like from the outside, doesn't look much. Yeah, it doesn't. That's the thing. That's what I say. It doesn't look much at all. I mean from here it's just, I mean look okay, how I can see the beauty in the building and I really love it. You know, this kind of They date back to 1746. Yeah. So the building itself is 1949. So imagine the walls, you know, on either side, the whole thing was you couldn't get in unless you went through this gate. 18,000 people a day went through this gate apparently and worked here. It, you know, worked for the And um, somebody actually. When I talked to the lady yesterday, she did tell me that um, during the Second World War, 
and all the men left. That's when the women were working, and it's That's the right. women that were with, making the weapons, and a lot of them died actually because it was toxic and there was no protection. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, also, I think a lot of them lost their fingers because mm -hmm. it's that kind of work. Also, this wasn't on the map. You know, you couldn't find you wasn't because obviously it wasn't what they were doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it closed in 1967, so up until 67, and this is what I was told. It was He's still part of the Royal um, Arsenal. Okay. So wow. they come and inspect them every five years, I think. They're very oh, army. Oh, every five years. Yeah, 1746. They're really good. Yeah. And do you open the gates now? Um, we do, We open them in the summer for a month because uh, the local youth theatre group was uh, put on the play um, oh. called um, Mother Courage, which was Bertolt Brecht. It's a 1939 play about a Russian woman who value sort of business more than um, war. She followed the army, the Russian army, into war to make money on them and she, I think she lost her children as a result of it. Well they did the play in the arsenal and they wanted to use this as the as the um, box office. Okay. So the play started here and they went across the road. Okay. So we opened so we opened the gates especially. They're really lovely those gates. So are these the, the, are these the original yeah, gates that were used those days? These are the, these these are are the original gates, yeah. They've not been refurbished. It's the original gates. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, look, you can see all the detail on them. A guy came, a guy came here. Well, faster. These gates are really, really heavy. Those ones are new, but, you know, yeah, but there wouldn't have been gates there originally. Okay. You would it have was just only gone. one side. Yeah. It was only one side. Yeah. Okay. So when they established the building, that's when they put those gates as well. Yes, because um, the reason there were no gates there is because there wouldn't need to be. You only came through this one, gate. One yeah. side. And all of this here, there wouldn't have been back there either. Okay. And did we have soldiers? Probably, yeah. Because it would have been, um, it would have been a military, yeah. a military officer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. So the other thing you might notice, you know, in the pictures you saw on the internet, yes. like this wasn't the gate here, the small one. This yes. was filled in. Yes. So this was added in, mm. probably around about, you know, the same time. Eighteen, I think eighteen twenty-nine, maybe a little bit after that. But these gates were wow. original. This guy that came round, who was an expert, he came to look at the gate. Look at wow! But you can't imagine what he does. What what? I'll, I'll tell you. You tell me now. You're ready later. to tell me. Not, well, a bit later. Not okay, ready fine. to tell you yet. Yes. But you see the holes. He said something else went above the gate. At, at some point, in time, he believes because of the holes there, and there would have been a big, um, there would have been a big emblem, and he was looking for the um, like a shield. Yes. A royal kind of like coat of arms, like that kind of thing. Yeah. He, he believes that that should have been there in the loop. That's what he thinks. Really? But he says he thinks he's seen it in a photograph somewhere, but he can't find it, he doesn't know where it is. So, like removed stolen or removed to protect something? Removed to protect, maybe, but oh, certainly not. Protect. Don't think stolen. But he okay. said he can tell there was something there yeah, because of the hole. What do you mean by end of the building? Well, this was this is an extension. This was added on. Oh, 
Oh. So this is where the, it was initially. Right? I guess and then so. This is extension. I, yeah, I couldn't tell you when. Okay. But uh, it can't be any other reason. So yeah, this would have, this bit that we're in now would have been added on. Yeah. At wow. some point. Wow. And it even goes through here into the men. You can't. Don't film in there. But I'll no. show you. Okay. So you wouldn't want to look. See. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye bye! See that? Cool. Okay. Continues even, even through there. Okay. Wow. Okay. Alright. So it's not worth filming. You don't really know what we're talking about. Yes, indeed. You don't really know what to film it, but. Um, so these are, these are obviously, they're, they're, I didn't know what you wanted to do, so they're, they're all sort of locked at the moment. Yes, but I mean, I can unlock them if you want. I just need to get the keys. Oh. It's okay. You know where you you normally do a business um, when you do your business meeting. The training, yes. That would be fine. That would be fine. I don't want to. I don't want to film in here in our office. Okay. Okay. So wow. And just see the view. Just see the view from here. Oh, this place is nice. It's beautiful. All those are new buildings, anyway. Woolwich is really coming up. New, brand new. Welcome to Royal Arsenal Riverside. Didn't really tidy up. So this, so this is a this is our training room. Mm -hmm. See this really high ceiling again. Yes. Wow. So what do you do in here? Training? What training? What do you? In here, well, we we teach uh, people about. Um, business everything okay. to do with business so it could okay. be how to write a business plan or it could be about social media because mm -hmm. uh, we do e-business as well okay so uh, it could be about search engine optimization seo um sales marketing everything to do with business okay and, and, oh, and we also hire the room out as well okay this this room yes this room yeah so if you wanted let's say for example you were a local organization and you wanted to run a workshop, mm -hmm. you could run that workshop in here. Okay, in this room? Yeah, using the computers, or you could do it without the computers. Okay. And is this the biggest room in the building? This is, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is definitely the, the, the biggest room. Okay. And you have, in the building, you have so many different offices for different people. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got offices for ourselves, and then we've got tenants who've got their own offices as well. Okay. But do they all have any offices? Is it the offices, the people, the other people don't have any offices? Is it all about business? Yeah, um, I mean, they, they run their own businesses, but they're not. Their businesses are not about business support. Okay. One of them is um, a marketing and PR consultancy, mm -hmm. uh, Bloom Consulting, and then we've got Life Force Security. So that's a security company. Oh, okay, security. Okay. So you know, they're just they're just businesses, you know, that are renting office space okay. from us. Uh, this room seats. 25 in theatre style. Oh, or, really? Yeah, so you can wow. believe it or not, yeah, we've got, you can lay 25 chairs out in theatre style. Wow. And um, which we have, which we do regularly. Yeah. Um, and when you hide the room, you get refreshments, you know, tea and coffee, mm. you get the screen, mm. like, it's wireless, you know. So okay. It's actually, it's quite good, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we price everything here very competitively mm. because we want it to be a sort of, you know, it's for the community. Okay, isn't? yeah. That's what I wanted to ask. Price or ask. Is well, it affordable? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's competitive compared to with everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, if you want the room with the computers and the monitor and the laptop, mm -hmm. uh, refreshments, everything included, it's, um, it's £160 for a day. Wow. It's £110 for half a day. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that um, includes all the refreshments and everything. Okay. Uh, and if you want it without the computers, mm -hmm. just with the big screen and the laptop, it's seventy pounds for half a day and one hundred and ten for the whole day. Okay. Plus VAT, of course. Which, oh, plus VAT. Which, of course, we don't get to keep that. Okay. We don't have a choice. We have to charge it, but okay. it's, it's air conditioned. Okay. So all the rooms, all the main offices, uh, above and downstairs, are air conditioned. So it's really nice and comfortable. Mm. It does get hot in the summer. Oh, it gets really hot. Yeah, I mean, it's that kind of, the sun just comes through. Mm, mm. And you know the prices that you just quoted now, mm. does, it, does it matter how many people you bring, or it doesn't matter? You can bring 25, like you said, well, the or two people, or five people, is it still the same yeah, price? Yeah, I'll charge it the same for two as well for 25, but you okay. can, we can't really 
25 is a maximum because then mm. you start going into sort of health and safety exactly. um, issues. You know, if you over, you can't really overcrowd the room, mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know at 25 it's comfortable, everyone's seated, mm -hmm. you can get the trainer. You know, you're not right on in everybody's yeah, yeah. face, it's so it. it's not it's not bad at all. Okay, okay, mm. good. You Normally, I mean, our work, we run workshops where we've had, you know, 20 odd people in here. Okay. So it does, it does fit. Nice and comfortable. Okay. And um, last time I was here as well, when I spoke to Amba, she actually said that you can hire a room if you don't want to, if you want to just come and work in a quiet place. And it's only, what, yes. Um, yeah, that's our co co-working co hot desk. Can come follow this? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, the other room. Yes, so, instead of the gates. Space of the gates. Space of the gates. So that's when you call it space and the gates. Yeah, because it's co working space or hot desk in space, mm -hmm. and this is the gate house. Okay, yeah, this is the gate house. So, Jill, our administrator, she actually came up with a name. Mm -hmm. which you, you should get a picture of that. Yes, yeah, space, space of the, the gate. gate. That's beautiful. So, it's the gate and there's a space. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it <laughs> so, is. So, just put the gate and the space together and you get a name. Yeah. Space and the gate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's excuse these cables here because we were doing something, but so we've got in here, so we've got eight desks, mm -hmm. and that oh, tree, yeah, that, tree. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, that tree. is, that's, wow. um, that's a thought tree, so we had that designed, and so everything on there, they, they are all motivational sayings from mm -hmm. famous entrepreneurs or famous people through history, mm -hmm. for example, uh, when you're going through hell, keep going, mm -hmm. that's Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't learn to walk by following the rules, you learn by doing and falling over, Wow. and that's Richard Branson. Okay, what about this strong lines are motivated by dynamic purposes? I'm not sure you said that actually. I mean, I'd love to. I mean, I actually did get most of those from, you know, I, I searched the internet, you know, from books. Yes. And uh, to try and find out, you know, who, you know, said all of these things. Uh, ah, wow, look at that one. Your time, your time is limited, so don't waste it reading someone else's time. Yeah, that's a good that's one. That's really oh. nice. Well, and this, I think, is this inspiration for those who want to start their business, or yeah, those who are in the business. Anybody that comes in here, into this room, you know, to, like, for example, you come in here and you can hire a desk mm. for £10 for half a day, which is from, say, 9 till 1, mm -hmm. or from uh, 1 till 5, mm -hmm. or for a whole day for £15, plus VAT, mm -hmm. the old dreaded VAT, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so that, so that, that price includes a desk, so you could be in here, we've got nobody in today, or we've got nobody in yet, mm -hmm. um, but you could be in here with, you know, four or five other like-minded people, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, people, people that work from home who want to actually get, they can't afford an Something office full time, yes. or they can't, they don't want, they don't need an office full time, but they want to get out of the house, you know, it's driving me mad with all those distractions, mm -hmm. yeah, so you come out, and, um, and you, you can come, you can sit at a desk, okay. um, we, there's a choice, we have, these are not like the multi. Yeah, this room has got all of these rooms got their own Wi-Fi connection. So you see, it's got um, oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So in here, there's a Wi-Fi connection that is just for this room, and it goes around the building. Mm -hmm. um, and you pay for like when well, you, you you pay your ten pound, yes. that's about twelve pound fifty. Yeah. Stay so half a day. When the half day's over, your Wi-Fi switches off. Oh, automatically. Yeah, it's okay. all, it's all very fast. Very fast software. Mm. But yeah, there's a whole load of things that are logic. Logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you anywhere. This is actually, I think this is probably my favourite of all of them. Which one? One day your life will flash before your eyes. Make sure it's worth watching. <laughs> wow. I really like that one, you know, I mean, it's that's very good. That is so deep. I don't think my life will be worth what it is. <laughs> well, but that's the thing, so that's what I say, so, so make sure, make sure, make sure it is worth it. Do something in your life that's uh -huh. really, you know, that's, that worth is worth it. Yeah. yeah, that if they put a screen in front of you, you, the person, who, you'll be more happier than even the other people watching yeah. your life. I mean, that everybody just... likes to think that they leave their mark. Yes. You know? mm. I don't know. I mean, like we sort of help a lot of people here, you know, and that's the, that's the really great thing about what we do. Yeah. You know, the amount of people that come back to us and say, oh, you know, thanks for helping, or, you know, yes. you've really changed our lives. Yes. That's really amazing, actually. That's a great thing. It gets you up, gets me up every day. Yes. Definitely. Wow. And I know in the training room, you've got computers mm. in there. 
And if I wanted to hire this person, I don't have a laptop. I don't, can I can I get um, provide that or? I mean, we do have some laptops that are our own, you know, that we use in the business. I and mean, I guess if one is available, we could probably let you use one. But generally speaking, if you're coming here to work and use a Wi-Fi, you would need to have a laptop. Oh, okay. We have in the past, you know, where we've got people that we're working with who don't have any money, are unemployed, and really have got nothing. You know, they're kind of, yeah. they're sort of sunk to the bottom, they need to mm -hmm. come up again. Then we'll help them out with their computer. Okay, that's good. That's really good. That's really, I think this is the first time I see real work for the community. Really? By, yeah, there's by the of, services. There's a lot of, there's a lot of them out there, but this is kind of really different because you're trying to help people get to work yeah. as well, which is, which is really, really I mean, important. In 2011, I mean, we sort of suffered a really major change in 2011. We, we got a lot, we had, we shrank as a business and we started to grow again, but a few people, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, um, a guy a couple of years ago, I mean, if you, uh, I mean, he's a really nice guy, but he came in, he started his business, and after about a year he came in, gave me a cheque for £100, and he said, you know, we've had a good year, yeah. here you go, can you use this? Yes. You know, give it to someone, you know. Oh. And then, um, go and make it even further, I mean, I didn't know this particular, uh, this particular person, but um, we used to run a grant scheme, or, you know, there was a grant scheme. It was three and a half thousand pounds, then, which you didn't have to give back. You know, it was money that you got to help start a business. And uh, I think this guy started the business, or it was a woman, I can't remember, I was just told about it. I was here at the time, but um, they started the business, their business did quite well, and came in with this three and a half thousand pounds, they want to get it back. Can you use this to give to people to help them start their business? Wow. So he actually gave back the grant. Or she gave back the grant, which really? was yeah, which was really good. That is so good. That so is people so do give back, and of course, a lot of the people that we work with, they come and they'll, they'll we run these network events, mm -hmm. free network events, mm -hmm. um, and they'll come and talk at these events about their experience. The experience yeah. They'll pass on their mm. their experience to other people, mm. so they're helping out, but they give back. They do the community. That is good. That yeah. is really good. Someone yeah. giving back all that money. All the time. That oh, is, no, that's appreciation. That is appreciation. You don't, you, you don't even imagine that somebody would do that. Yeah, yeah. building your shoulders downstairs. Yeah, so here. Okay, okay. right. So, okay. I don't know if you've ever filmed this, but just here. Mm -hmm. So we oh, got, we're yes. going into the other wing. So just here, there is a, a there is a pipe, and you want me to read it. Yes, I think she can take it as yes. well, but you can read okay. it as well. Right. Wow. It, it says this entrance. So the Royal Arsenal is not planned clear. <laughs> and this gateway uh, constructed by order of General Viscount Beresford, GCB, GCH, wow. Master General of the Ordnance, in the tenth year of the reign of His Majesty King George IV, AD 1829. Wow. <laughs> I know, it's incredible, this isn't This is it? good. If they, I think if they painted it a different colour, Gold, pick it out and gold. Yes, mm. they paid it a different colour. This guy that came in to see me, that's what he said. Oh, they said th this amazing guy. Yes, right. this amazing this is, this guy is, that you don't want to tell me about. I'll tell you in a minute, yeah. Okay. This incredible man that came in mm -hmm. and he knows somebody that could do it. Oh, who can paint it. Who can pick it out and gold, yes. Yeah, because you know, who, who specialises in doing that kind of thing. Mm. I can yeah. do this. Huh? I yeah, can she do, can do yeah. this as well, she paints stuff. I think it would be really good though to do, you know, to have it really like, but you have to have a really steady hand and you have to have like a special brush and... Yeah, <laughs> this would be good No, this yeah. would be good if it's a different colour. Because yeah. then white, yeah. blends with the white on the wall and you can't really read it. I would want, personally, I'd like to see it in gold, mm. you know, but I guess if it was in black or in red or, you know, a colour that really sort of stood out against there would be great. Why do you want gold? Is gold your favourite or gold no. symbolises something? Gold is the sort of traditional colour when you pick out the, that sort of lettering. Okay. You know, you normally see it's done in gold. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also the Queen's colours? Um, I don't know. No, okay. sure. Are they? Oh. I yeah, mean, the crown is golden. A lot of them are, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Some of them might be silver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so that's we're that's almost good. at the end of the, look, look at this curved window. You don't wow. really get you don't get it's a work machine. No, now, you don't get curved windows. Wow. I know, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, really, really. Just wow. 
So, I mean, down here is, um, this is the end of the building. So there's another, there's another meeting space. I mean, yeah. wherever there's a space, mm -hmm. I've put, you know, some chairs. So, some chairs, yeah. so you can, like, meet me, sort of chat with a client, you know, if you're, so imagine you can, you're hot desking, but you want to have a meet with someone, you know, mm -hmm. they can come in, you know, all you've got to do is just say, oh, I'm having a meet with somebody, and, and you can book the space. It's free, it's you know, pay for it. So you can meet here, or the most popular one is the one on the other side with the three round Yeah, the big three round chairs. Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So this is the end of yeah. the Yeah, so here is just two more offices where, two, which, which I can't really take you in there because they're... Yeah. Apart from that, it's, okay. it's okay. <laughs> I can't go there. Oh, this is beautiful. So we're coming back up. Yeah, so it's fabulous yeah. building. So how many floors? Is it two floors? Just the ground floor and the first floor. What we've seen is it's so beautiful. The building and everything that you told us up today about the building. It's so it's it's beautiful. Like I said before, I've lived in the area for more than fifteen years and I pass here all the time. Either I'm driving or I'm walking to Woolwich and buying stuff even in Iceland, but I've never seen this building. And when I met with Amber, she works downstairs, she's one of your clients in, in the building. And she was telling me that, because I was meant to meet her up, and that she's explaining to me that I can't see what you're talking about. I can see that building, I can see that building, but my eye could not catch this building because it wasn't in my mind at all, because I saw it. I think it's just a gate. I never thought that there are offices in, in here. So when I came in, that inspired me today. And I was like, we have to tell the community, people that live in Greenwich, about this building. No, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I totally agree. And you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, we tell people, I mean, the landmark for everybody around here is Iceland. Mm -hmm. When we say, you know, we're that big building with the clock on and the gates and the cannons on the front, they don't see it. Yes. You know, because after nearly 200 years, I think it's just faded into the landscape. Mm. So we say, go to Iceland, and then we'll be back to Iceland, so look to your left, and you'll see it. Okay. And then people do it, and it's like, wow, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> or, or they say, oh, I knew it was there, but I didn't know anything went on in there. Yes. So, but, you know, so much goes on yeah. in this building. You know, mm. people, uh, people don't realise. But I'm, I'm really hoping that more people will learn, mm. you know, mm. what we're doing here. Mm. And, you know, and just see the building. Mm. You know, I mean, it's a beautiful building from the outside. It is. It looks really, it looks really fantastic. Now, now because I know about it, it looks fantastic. But mm. before, when I didn't know about it, it was just a building. Yeah. To me, I didn't even see it. Yeah. I was going to say, when I see that kind of thing, yes. uh, it always makes me think about how much wealth and prosperity there was in the area because it, those buildings are really quite ornate, aren't they? Mm. The town hall, all the buildings around by the library, mm -hmm. Calderwood Street. You know, they're really. They spend a lot of money, they're really fabulous. Mm. And, um, you know, so it just goes to show you how prosperous it must have been in here. Mm. And I think it's, it's I, I think we're going back to that, those days when, but now it's different because they're building, they're building so many things. It's, I think this area is coming up. Yeah. But I just hope that this building will stay because it's, it's a big significance in this building. Well, it's a listed building, so I don't think it's going to be knocked down anytime mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be here for a long time. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a landmark building. Mm -hmm. I know that, um, I mean, what it represents, you know, I mean, if you consider it was the entrance to the arsenal, mm -hmm. um, that is pretty amazing, you know. So I think it will stay because it's, you know, it's got some historical significance. Yes. And, uh, you know, but I was saying to you the other day, did, did, I, did I tell you about the Arsenal Football Club? I, I just wanted to ask you about that. Yeah? Yes, so tell yes, me there's more there's about a, that. A thing going <laughs> on. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I'm not a historian, as I've told you before, but, um, yeah, the Arsenal Football Club actually started here. They, they, t they originally were a team of, um, I think, apprentices and engineers who worked in the factory. Wow. Who put together a football team, hence the reason why they are called Arsenal, because this is the Woolwich Arsenal. Yes. It was a Royal Arsenal. And the reason that they're called the Gunners, mm -hmm. and they have a cannon, you know, on their logo, is because of the, you know, the, the fact that it was where they made all those mm. guns and cannons at the Arsenal. Mm. So, but they moved, obviously, to Highbury. Yes. But they were based here, and this mm. is where the Arsenal originated yeah. Arsenal Football Club. Yeah. So any I mean any Arsenal supporter would know that probably. Mm -hmm. Which if, I think that's amazing. Yeah, they should come back and see where the roots started. Exactly, from. yeah. And I mean the other thing, I don't know if I told you, but and this is something that I was told, um, the um, they used to, they used to test the big cannons that they made, the mm -hmm. big you know, the great big these great big long guns. Mm -hmm. 
by firing them up the river, you know, from, from there, you know, down as far as Gravesend. I think they could fire them all the way to Gravesend and they would land on their firing range. Wow. So imagine that going on. Wow. You know, I don't know how long ago that was. But. Mm. And this, this building was where they used to make guns in here. No, in here, no, no, this. All they did in here, I mean, this was a military building, almost certainly, because the arsenal was a military site. Mm -hmm. But this building was the gatehouse, so I imagine everything that went on here was administration to do with deliveries and people coming and going. Mm -hmm. And there, probably there was some, you know, some military personnel that worked here. Mm -hmm. And you can tell by the building, you know, it's not a grand building on the inside, it's a very purposeful, utilitarian building, but like that big room with the two fireplaces in, you know, that's probably, you know, it must have been a room, I don't suppose it was one person's office, it was probably, you know, a lot of people worked in there. Mm. But they probably did all the administration for deliveries and people coming and going. Mm. And um, the gates that we just saw, the gates that we saw mm. um, in front, you say that those gates are the original gates? They are the original gates, Since yeah. 1829? Yeah, um, since 1829. Okay, 1829. Um, uh -huh. I know, and gates aren't made like that anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. which is incredible really mm. um, yeah absolutely amazing and obviously that that road at the back which is now sort of Plumstead Road and Beresford Street yeah. that didn't used to be there that used to run across the front mm -hmm. uh, you know where the gates were mm -hmm. and there was no road there that was just part of the the site of the um, the arsenal I, I'm not sure how big it was I think it was 120 acres the site so it was pretty big. And how many people, how many people are walking to the gates every day? I was told 80,000 people a day used to come to work in the Arsenal, used to come through those gates, these yes. gates, underneath here, where mm. we're sitting now. It's amazing. Wow. And someone also told me about the World War II there. The World War II, the women were actually working in the building, making the weapons, and a lot of them died because it was toxic and there was not really protection. I think it's a very dangerous thing to do. Yeah, there were a lot of women that worked when the men were away yes. fighting. Uh, a lot of women did you know, manual labour and took mm. to those jobs. I'm sure they worked in this building, but most of them worked in the arsenal, on the arsenal site, making munitions, mm -hmm. you know, making shells, making bullets, cannons, mm -hmm. and guns, and what have you. And I, I did hear, though, that a lot of women lost their fingers, mm -hmm. you know, because they were using sort of heavy equipment, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's just the nature of that kind of work. Yeah. But also, uh, that they were actually very good at it as well. Mm -hmm. I met this lady that's actually so inspired with them, um, with all this that is happening. The women, women in Woolwich, mm. the, the ones that were making weapons and they died in the process and they lost some of them, lost their fingers. And she's actually making a movie out of it. Really? Be, yeah, and if that comes out, and she's writing a play about yeah. it. If that comes out, I'll definitely let you know. About oh, okay, it. that'd be great. So, yeah, and, and the people living around, because I know this, this place is, is good, the history behind it. And now, coming, talking about the history behind it, I know there's someone who came to see you. Yeah. Can you tell me more about this? Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I mean, this is really, um, this is so unusual. Um, this was last month, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we now? Judge, was it before or after Christmas? No, it was after Christmas, yeah. So, last month, it's one evening. Um, you know, you get a lot of tourists going across to the Arsenal site. This guy comes in and, uh, you know, rings the bell and... Um, so he said, hi, you know, I'm, just, I'm here from Australia, I'm going back tomorrow, he's here with his wife, mm -hmm. um, nice guy, you know, very friendly. He was asking me, he wanted to know about the gates, mm -hmm. was there, you know, a big um, emblem, you know, a big, um, what do you call it, um, there should be like a, like a crown and a sort of like a badge mm -hmm. above the gates. So I said, well, I really don't know because, you know, I don't know that much about the building, but mm -hmm. I know they're the original gates. So he came in, we were talking, and so I said, you know, I was telling him about the books, telling him about all these things, and he said, I bet you're wondering why I'm so interested in the gates. Mm -hmm. I said, well, kind of, and he said, you know, because I it's a bit of a hobby of mine, you know, I go around sort of looking at old buildings and old things, and so he asked me if I could guess what he did, and you know, I mean, I just, you could not guess what this guy did. I mean, not in a million, not in a million years, he would never, he would never, you would never guess. Anyway, Kate, show me his card, right? Mm. Um, this is his name. His name is Jim Prattington. So I'll show you a picture of what he makes. He's the only person in the world that makes them. He makes, ah. he makes the carriages, the royal carriages for the Queen. 
A million really? dollar question. So yeah, this guy. So like for example, this is the you know the Diamond Jubilee yes. when the Queen you know was going round and you know. I mean, he makes the. Wow. So he makes. He's in Australia. He makes yes. them in Australia. Then they put them on a jumbo and they get sent over here. He showed me pictures going back to the 60s, black and white pictures of him and the Queen of Prince Philip <laughs> looking, uh, 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 looking at different, um, you know, looking at different coaches that he'd mm -hmm. made. Wow. He, so I asked him about the gold one. You know the really ornate gold one? He said he didn't make that. That one's older. That was made for the Queen Mother. Okay. He's made coaches for um, the, uh, like, for royal families in other sort of countries. Like in Australia, for example, he made a gold chariot that they used in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. But he made, this is the diamond, uh, and this one is the, this is the new state coach, right, for the Diamond Jubilee. Inside this coach, he's got bits of timber from the history of England and the Commonwealth. He's got bits of timber from the wow. door frame of number 10 Downing Street, from HMS Victory, you know, from all these famous, when he told people, he, told, he wrote to people all over the world and said, I'm making a carriage for the Queen, would you like to donate? a piece of timber or a piece of metal that can go into it. And the way he's put it in, if you look at this website, you'll see it's so ornate. Um, and uh, he's incorporated all of these bits of wood inside the Whoa. carriage in the most beautiful way. The, the, I mean, how many people make these in a world? One, well, <laughs> here and his apprentice. And um, they're all handmade. Um, he also, there's another one called the Australia coach, I think, which they use every year for the opening of Parliament. So when you see the Queen going to um, open Parliament every year in the Australia coach, that's one that he built. And this one here, this is the new state coach, the Diamond Jubilee coach, this was uh, the last one he made. Incredible. Wow, so you were right to say there's no way of guess. There's yeah. no way of guess this. And this is fun. It, the things he told me, I can't remember half of them, but it was such a privilege to meet this guy. And so that's why he was so interested in the gates, because you know he wanted to know because yes. he's into all of this. Mm. Imagine that, so he makes he makes this for the Queen. Incredible. Wow. But if you look at his website, which is uh well, I can't even see it. Uh, you have to just Google his name, Jim Freckland. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Queen is the second new state page. Yeah. Maybe it's a bit too. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fancy that. So, what do you do for them? No, I make the coach. I make the royal state coaches for the Queen. Yeah. yeah. What a fantastic. He's made coaches for the Saudi royal family, for you know, for other royal families around the world, but mainly for the Queen. And also, if you if you look really close, when you look in his website, you can see. But if you look really close at the woman, you can see he's got his name on it. Okay. Jim Frackington. Amazing, actually. I thought that was really Amazing. Great. Yeah. That wow. is incredible. So I spent a bit of time talking to him because he was so interested. Mm -hmm. And anyway, how often do you get to meet somebody no. who hobnobs with the Queen? Mm. Did you take pictures of him? I didn't actually, no. I mean, I should have done. <laughs> yeah, you should have. I should have done. But yeah, it's in there. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's in there. But he said the next time I'm in Australia, if I ever get to Australia, yes. I should come and look him up. Okay, I think when I, I want to go to Australia, I'll come and get the card and get yeah. the details. You know, um, he was looking for this emblem that goes over yeah. the gate, and so I'm going to have a look around because somebody told me that they'd seen some gates around here that had something similar. Mm. So if I find these gates, I'll take a picture and I'll send it to him. And I'll say, Hi, you know, remember me? Mm. Mm. Did you send him to the his, historic? Um he'd already been across oh, to the he'd already been, he'd already been there okay. and he came from there to here because he wanted he he knew the connection of this mm -hmm. gatehouse you know to the arsenal side mm -hmm. so he wanted to come and have a chat mm -hmm. and being me being a friendly kind of person so yes. yeah of course come thank in you, uh, thank you it's very much yeah. thank you very much tony thank you very much for your time my pleasure thank you for inviting us thank you for yeah. your hospitality great having you here. Know, do you know what I was actually? I was just thinking. You know, I kept. I've been talking all the time about the free tea and coffee. Yes, exactly. And you were probably thinking, you know, where is this free tea and coffee? Thank you. But you know, because you can be so busy, mm. and we are a very small team. You know, mm. I haven't had a chance really. But I mean, if you'd like a tea and coffee, you can have one before you go. Okay. But thank you very much for today. My pleasure. And this, I think. To all the Greenwich residents and the Greenwich people who work in who work in Greenwich, who live in Greenwich, and this is not just.
for Greenwich, like you said, this is for anybody else. Anybody yeah. could, must they be residents in Greenwich to use the uh, facilities? And Lotion. For, for our business support, uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, it's primarily Greenwich, but it's Lewisham as well. And uh, as well. But for the, but for the co-working space, the space at the gate, anybody really. Anybody, from any borough, like you yeah. know, from Hackney Borough. Or yeah, Hackney. I think it's more likely to be from the borough of Greenwich, mm -hmm. or, or Lewisham, because they're neighbouring, maybe possibly Bexley, but yes, I, think, yeah. I think more likely from here. I mean, anybody that's running a business, working from home, mm -hmm. That just needs to get out, get mm. a bit of headspace, mm, mm, mm. you know, and um, you know it will be perfect. Okay. Really perfect. Yeah. All right. From today, just look at the video. When you look at the video, you need to know where the building is. When you're passing by, please just look, check it out. If you want to come in, you can come in. We have Tony here. We'll be mm -hmm. very happy to take you around and tell you about the history of the building, the little one that he knows, like he said, he's not a historian, so it's fine, but just the little one that he knows, or you can actually find it out yourself as well. So thank you very much, Tony, once again. My pleasure, thank, thank you, you nice much. to meet you.